Hello, hello, all of my beautiful freaking people. Welcome back to another episode of FML Talk. This is very exciting today because we are doing everyone's favorite episode of the season, the infamous questions episode, but we are officially on YouTube now, so you're going to be able to watch Jackie and I answer all of the questions you submitted. So sit back, grab a drink, and welcome to FML Talk. Oh my god. Wait, how old was the other girl? 19. Can you believe that shit? Hey, this is Gabrielle Stone. Good book. I did not in chapter 6 yet. <gasps> he did what? 48 hours? What a dick. Yeah, but have you seen all the photos on her Instagram? And this is FML Talk. Oh no, she didn't. Y'all know I love a good self-love cocktail and occasionally an actual cocktail. I have always notoriously hated the taste of alcohol and needed it disguised in a good mixology cocktail until I discovered Neft. Because Neft is a premium vodka in its purest form with non-GMO rye, it has a light taste full of character. Not only is Neft one of the best tasting vodkas I've ever had, it also comes in the cutest packaging I have ever seen. Their unbreakable barrel keeps it chilled for up to six hours, making it the perfect drink to take just about anywhere. Join me in adding a little actual cocktail into your self-love cocktail with Neft Vodka. Cheers. This is usually the most fun episode that we do once every season, and this is the season three official question episode. I'm going to bring Jackie on to co-host with me. She is my producer and my best friend, and we are going to go through one by one and answer all of the questions, all of the things that you guys answered. I have not seen any of these questions. We are going in fully fucking blind, so let's get to it. We're really matching today. We are really matching, and it was not planned because I showed up like this, and it, you just changed. Well, I changed, but this was the fourth outfit it's I It's okay, Gabrielle. You could... Gab- Gabrielle. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Gabrielle. You can tell the whole world where you get your um, fashion Sense inspo. From, yeah. You know, you and buy mom me. jeans. I buy you mom You know, we jeans. have a lot of the same outfits. We do. I actually still have a red shirt of yours that I stole and never put And I have one back. of your green things oh my god that i'm not giving back. okay fine then that's a fair trade <laughs> <laughs> um i'm excited because i don't know if i'm excited or if i'm nervous because we normally do the questions episode in the, sa- the safety of my little office at home where we're just like sh- on the couch shooting the shit and now people can see us and it's it's got a whole new level of pressure dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i see you too <laughs> um so If you guys are new to the podcast, because I know we have a a bunch of new people that have joined us recently, this is the episode where we answer all of your questions. Your questions, That were submitted on the the Instagram stories. Sometimes they're book related, sometimes they're life related, and it's always everybody's favorite fucking episode of the season. But you know what? Now that we're sitting far apart, I can take that and you can be like this is the next question and I could totally make it up and you would never know oh my god rude that would be kind of funny it wouldn't I mean I wouldn't know either way because I don't know the question I was about to turn to everyone and be like what do you guys think but I was like they can't answer me um (laughs) I'm I'm excited I'm always a little nervous for these episodes and just to toot my own horn for one second when I first had the idea of like we should do a questions episode you were like they're boring nobody likes the I still stand by my statement everybody (laughs) These are always their favorite episodes. Okay, well, I am not everybody, Gabrielle, okay, and well, I stand by my statement. People think we're funny and like it's a good dynamic and they like hearing questions and answers. So let's begin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With, our little With our little cute crystal bowl. Normally we have it in one of my like salad bowls at home. It does look very mythical. You have to talk through I'm the Vanna mythics Whiting so it people right now. that aren't watching know what you're doing. I'm Vanna Whiting the bowl. The bowl. <laughs> With my hand. Okay. Should I do it one more time? Yeah. Just one just more w- time. Must. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. All right. There's no good place to put the bowl. There you go. Right in my crotch. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> if you weren't doing this job, what would you be doing? Oh, that's fun. Um. God, how do I answer that? Because like I can't say I'd be acting because I still do do that. Um. So let's just go completely away from, away from any the of arts. the stuff I've ever done. Away from the arts. If you were not an artist. I think if school and years of study didn't 
play a factor. I would be either a lawyer or a therapist, probably a therapist because there's too much paperwork involved with the lawyer. Route. You would be so bored with the lawyer work. Yeah, but I'm really good at like arguing and like ha- making my yeah, point. Yeah, but that's and, like, not a all way. a lawyer is. No, I know. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot more paperwork Hence, than it is arguing. The therapist answer. <laughs> if you could argue your way out of paperwork, right, right. then that would be ideal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so probably a therapist. Great. I just never wanted to go to that amount of school. Well, you kind of are. Sort of. Right, in like a weird roundabout way. Underhanded therapist. An fml pissed. fml th- <laughs> I'm pissed? F- fml pissed. Pissed, fml Um, What would you be doing? I would be an archaeologist. What? You always have the most random <laughs> fucking answers, and I'm always like, anything I would think, I could have guessed 100 guesses and would have never arrived at that. Okay, so this is actually a really funny story. I was seven. And my dad asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I would just listen to everything my dad said because I idolized him. He's my dad. Right. So he's like, what would you like to be when you grow up? And I said, I can't decide. He's like, well, what are you deciding between? I was like, an actress or an archaeologist? And he was like, an archaeologist? Why would you want to go digging in the dirt? And I go, okay, I'll be an actress then. Oh my God. And now he's beating himself up about it because <laughs> every other thing it's like, this is not a stable career. I'm How dead. could you have chosen this? I was like, your fault, not mine. I could have been <laughs> digging in the dirt, fucking like <laughs> bringing up fossil bones, making epic scientific discoveries, it's but true. you wanted me to go pound mm-hmm. the pavement in LA and be in the hardest business on the planet. Exactly. What archaeology because I just love storytelling and putting pieces together of a story that used to be and trying to figure out what happened and why and how and like trying to get it really down to the exact is like our jam weird like that in the sense where like you plan murder mystery parties (laughs) yeah like the whole like puzzles it was like solve this riddle like that's my my jam that was like the last (laughs) thing I ever would have expected okay that was a good start number two all right number two (laughs) If you could delete one of the men from FML who would like delete, like just be like backspace, backspace. (laughs) who would it be? Oh my God. Can I just say the other day I saw somebody put a glass on the table and I didn't want it there. And I was like, no, delete, delete. (laughs) I was like, wait, that's not the right word. (laughs) We are living in the computer realm. Um, That's tough. I mean- you can't really say like Daniel or Javier because then there would be no there would be no FML. Um, ugh, uh, it would be between Marcus and Ireland. Ireland's like just expendable because like I don't even remember his fucking yeah, name. Yeah, but Ireland was a pivotal point. Po- That's p- true. P- 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 <laughs> can't speak today. <laughs> a pivotal moment that's true that's a very valid point marcus and I was, was not i was gonna say marcus by default because i didn't learn as much with him as i did with the other people men yeah appeared. he was just there he yeah. was just like the candy right he was just like oh we went to greece and got some candy right. like, <laughs> like that's oh, marcus my God, i'm dying um yes accurate so the, that you make a good point and ireland really smacked me with a big fucking lesson upside my head um, really still thankful I wasn't murdered in that situation because it could have gone either way. Uh, and yeah, so let's go with Marcus. Great. Deleted. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> he right. also, just side note, not to put him on blast, but was the only guy, not that I asked for Ireland's permission because like I don't know his name or his contact information, um, but he, Marcus was the only guy that did not sign a release form for me for book one. So just by default, delete. <laughs> delete. How would you grow more tolerant of, s- how do you grow more tolerant of small talk when getting back into the dating scene? That's interesting. Um, I haven't been in the fucking dating scene for so long. Maybe she meant it as like a general you. Right, like right. You as in you guys. No, 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 I know, but like I'm saying, I don't know how good I am going to be at answering that because I'm not going to say, okay, you start. <laughs> this is how you become tolerant of, of small talk. You don't. 
Yeah, I don't do small talk ever, especially dating. I'm like, I want them to know who I am off the bat. And yeah. if they don't like it, they can leave. Yeah. So like I hit them hard with the questions. I'm like, so where are you from? Like, what's your trauma? Like, right, <laughs> like right. you know what that I mean? Was gonna, that was honestly going to be my answer too. It's like, you know, when you first go out on dates and you're still kind of being reserved and you're like, oh, okay. So, you know, like, where are you from? What's your favorite food? You know, like you're like, what did you yeah. do last Saturday? Favorite food, favorite color, favorite right. movie, like all like of that. Five. Like you can wait till date five. Yeah. For that. And like. now you're like, what's your emotional trauma? How emotionally intelligent are you? Have you gone to therapy? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is your opinion on the subject matter? How's of, your relationship like, with your parents? Where are you about in politics? Like, I need to know, like, <laughs> everything that goes through your mind because if it's not compatible i'm like right, right no let's date just two. Like, let's just be friends right or don't ever talk to me again tell like, me everything like, <laughs> that could explode right off the bat and we'll see if it's worth walking through the fucking minefield yeah so fuck small talk is the fuck, answer to that yeah, question fuck small talk yeah great just be you be yourself and if they don't like it thank you next yeah i'm all about even if it's not a romantic situation like even with friends I don't like to go to dinner and like get to know someone over small talk I like to dive in deep I mean I think that's why I connect with people so much on my travels because when you sit down with them you're like so like what are you doing here and I'm like well let me tell you you know and you just like dive right in and that allows people to connect so much faster and I think it's the small talk is just the layer of bullshit that society puts on you and I think honestly deep down people people want to talk about their feelings and they want to talk about their belief systems and they want to talk about all the things that society tells them that they shouldn't be talking to yes. strangers about like people desperately want connection and small talk doesn't give you that so delete delete that's the fucking <laughs> we're gonna call this episode <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> okay uh, what has been your biggest struggle as a stepmom to a girl oh I was not prepared for that <laughs> um well I I don't we don't call me stepmom because Tay and I are not married. Um, he is a wonderful dad. Her mom is a wonderful mom. We are all like coexisting, co-parenting and friends together. I'm very lucky and blessed in that way. Um, they also don't live here at the moment. Uh, they currently live out of state. So we get her on holidays and weekends and then we go out to visit them um so it's a different dynamic than it was before they moved and it'll be different once they move back um what was the question what was your original question how how, how does it feel to how be? does it feel what are you doing with your life tell me <laughs> what Find the question. what was your biggest struggle oh Okay, God, I'm glad you said that because I wouldn't. Are you doing the thing right now where you are no, lying? I, okay, I can't read. I almost knocked the thing over. <laughs> delete. We're a mess, guys. Everything delete, deleted. Delete. Um, okay, the biggest struggle is finding that line of it's not your child, so you can't you can't be like, okay, this is how I would have raised them in this way, or this is how I would have handled this situation. Um, you have to understand that you're important in their life and you, you know, can be, you can discipline them when they're living in your house and like you are able to have a close relationship with them, but you are not the primary parent. I also hold step parents, step people, step steps, <laughs> um, in very high regard because my stepdad was such an incredible stepdad to me. Um, he came into my life when I was nine and was very much so my dad. Um, you know, after my dad passed, he walked me down the aisle. He was like really there for me throughout high school. Even when, um, my mom and my stepdad got divorced when I was 18, like he's always been my dad and will always be my dad. Um, and to me, step parents should get a different kind of recognition because they are choosing to love that person. You know, they're not like, not that parents love by default, but they're choosing to take on a responsibility and to include you in their life and to give you that love when they don't have to. And I, I hold a lot of respect for people that do that. I think she was also asking specifically to a girl. Oh, well, I mean, I've never done it with a, it's going to come out so wrong. Um, I have only step-personed to a 
little girl, not to a little boy. So I can only speak on my specific experience, but um, it's fucking great. Like she's awesome. She's rad and she, um, we have a great rapport and a great relationship. And, you know, she calls me peanut. I think that's in the book. Yeah. I think that's in the ridiculous misadventures. Um, I call her pinky cause she's so tiny and she's, she's a great little girl. She, it, it's been a big learning experience for me because I had a lot of triggers around the dynamic of Tay and his daughter because she was the same age that I was when I lost my dad. Tay has a lot of similar qualities of my father. Um, so there was a time early on in our relationship where the little child in me, obviously not me conscious as like an adult Gabrielle, but the little girl in me had a weird, not jealousy, but like a trigger around him splitting time between us. Um, and then that made me feel guilty because as an adult woman, consciously, I'm like, I can't feel like that. That's ridiculous. And I love this little girl. Um, but I had to honor the, the little girl in me that lost her daddy and didn't want to share time. Um, so we did a lot of work with our therapist around that so that I could really let go of, not let go of, but talk to my little girl and tell her that she didn't need to feel that way and that it was okay and that she could relax and that, you know, daddy wasn't going to die. Fair. We just went from like way light and breezy and fun to like deep and heavy mm. trauma in one question. That's the power of the papers. Welcome to FML talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. If you could go back to the note coffee now, would you change a note you left? Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so for those of you that have not read The Ridiculous Misadventures yet, um, The Note Coffee is a coffee shop in Vietnam and it's three stories and you walk in and it's covered in post-it notes. I mean covered, like all over the, the walls, on the ceiling, on the tables, on the chairs, like- Everywhere. Everywhere is covered. If you and guys I just really need not to emphasize everywhere. No. <laughs> What everywhere means. Covered in post-it notes. Everywhere. From, with notes written on them from people around the world. Um, some are just like random light happy notes. Some are like really heartfelt notes. And it was one of the coolest places I've ever been to. And I went and I wrote three notes while I was there. Um, I, I One was about Tay and I. One was about, one was um, my mom, my dad and me, my name on it so that we could all be together again. Um, oh, and one was if you're, if you have a broken heart, read Eat, Pray, FML. And no, I would not change any of those notes. I hope they are still there. If I ever go back, I'm going to look for them. Not that I have any recollection of what if you I go back them. and someone else put their note on top of one of your notes? That does happen. There's like many, many layers of I notes. know, but like, what would you just write another note and put it on top? I'd or probably, like, would you move your... I realistically would not be able to find the note if someone had put a I note I mean, on you top have a more or less idea of like the area. I don't. I really don't. I All know right. it was on the third floor. <laughs> well, that's a good starting point. Um, what if you were there, what note, what would your note say? <clears throat> Can I tell you the note I left in Epcot? Okay. What do you mean in Epcot? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> so Disney World has Epcot. Mm hmm. And in 2002, they made these like stone like pillars where you get like a little like square to like leave a note mm -hmm. and it's there forever. Mm -hmm. So like I did it with my brother and we put left like an, our picture oh. when we were 12 and then a note next to the picture. And so that note when we were 12 still in Disney world. Oh God, like fun. we can go okay, find so it. So what did your 12 year old wisdom have to say? <laughs> we, me and my brother came up with it together because we were inseparable. We're the same age. Okay. And it said, what's up? We're 12. <laughs> Deal with it. Fucking profound. <laughs> wow. Thank you for so bringing I that knowledge say... onto FML talk to drop that <laughs> incredible <laughs> so I would go to Thailand with my little note and be like, what's up? 
I'm 31. <laughs> Deal with I'm it. I'm dead. <laughs> that would be my note. Okay, fine. That was an epic fucking answer. Uh, I, I, I'll I allow it. <laughs> well, next time you go, now you're going to have to look for it. What? the your My note. At yeah. Epcot or at, yeah, at Epcot. In Vietnam? Next time you go to Epcot. Oh, okay. Just find the in find all the, the millions the of squares. Oh my god, stone. dude! <laughs> all right, next one. The number one piece of advice you'd tell a girl in her early twenties to follow: Don't rush to get in a relationship. Live in your fucking twenties. Like date, hang out with your girlfriends, go fucking travel, specifically solo travel. Like go live some life and don't make the focus around finding a relationship. That's mine. That's What's a great yours? one. <laughs> I'm, in my mind, I'm debating, should this be stupid or should it be honest? Both. I lean towards <laughs> stupid all the time. But <laughs> honestly, I would say something similar to that effect, I guess. But I'm thinking back of like the mistakes I made in my 20s mm. is, was that thinking that I had more time. Mm. So in your 20s, I would say beyond not making everything a relationship, I would say you don't have time. Mm. Like go out, like go for the job, right. do the thing. Like if you're scared, just say fuck it. Like go on the trip. Like yeah, all of that. Like because you because by the time you get the courage or you convince yourself that like it's time to do it, it's already too late. Right. So like out of college or out of high school, whatever you decide to do your wildest dreams don't wait just go do the things yeah yeah I think that's time is such a <clears throat> weird fucking thing to me it's like I remember so vividly being in high school and saying god if we could just fucking get to summer break yeah like this is the longest week of my life if we could just get to summer like fuck it was such a struggle and I was like I just can't wait to be out of high school I'm so over school I was not into it and now I think about how my mom would always say you know the older you get the quicker the time flies that mm -hmm. shit's true it's so true I mean this year I blinked and it's gone mm -hmm. and I feel like we were just in the thick of 2020 being like well, shit, by the time this episode airs, it'll be 2022. So, like, even more so. It, it's insane. Yeah. Well, could but could you also imagine if you had, like, instead of, like, lollygagging and, like, pretending that you learned the lesson but didn't and then learn the lesson and didn't and learn the lesson and didn't and make the same mistakes over and over, like, how much time you wasted? Could you imagine if you just, like, learned the lesson the first time? I think it depends on the situation, because I think there's growth and experience in learning the lessons, but I can also see the flip side of that coin to be like, well, you could have had different amazing experiences if you would have learned it the first time. So I think well, it depends yeah, on the Well, yeah, I think there's growth in the lesson, but if you learned it the first time, you grow faster. Yeah, but like, what if I had learned my abandonment thing before I got married? Then you probably or wouldn't have never I, gotten married to Daniel. <laughs> I know. And then I probably wouldn't but have you learned gone, it and I wouldn't have you had my thing with Javier. Like, you would have gone on a now? different learning path. Right. That's what I'm saying. You'd have you a different course, but like yeah. I would I would want to relive my exact story 10 times over to end up where I am now. Well, good thing you wrote a book about it. Fucking I. Next question. <laughs> Delete. Delete. <laughs> can you please break down how to do a thought onion having a hard time doing them? Yes, I can. Um, so in the journal, the self-love journal that's out now, um, I go into detail on the self-love cocktail, on the thought onion and on the origin experience. And so let's just like recap the onion, good old fucking onion, the trusty onion. Um, so there's three layers. The first layer is the superficial thought, which is your initial knee jerk reaction to when something happens. Like, oh my God, that was horrible. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to have you act out okay, all great. of the I'm different ready. layers. I'm ready. <laughs> um, so the initial reaction that you can't even control, you're just, it's like the right when it happens, like full on just, oh my God, that was horrible. Thank you. Um, and then you take a step back and you're like, okay, what emotion is underneath that is causing that reaction. That thing really scares me. Perfect. <laughs> this thing is scary. This thing is triggering me in some way. Great. Um, and then you step back and you say, okay, what is the subconscious fear 
or long stemming belief or unresolved trauma that is making me feel fear towards this thing. That thing mirrors to me all of my insecurities. Boom. And that insecurity is what in this scenario? Fear of uh, abandonment. Fear of abandonment. There fear you go. of not being not good enough. Being good enough. Fear of all the confidence. Fears. <laughs> um, so when you get to that core, that's the thing that you need to adjust, fix, heal to have a different reaction in the future. Um, once you get to the subconscious layer of it, that leads you to your origin experience. So you're like, okay, this is my subconscious thought or belief. What origin experience does that come from? So the journal is really going to help you not only understand it, but also have examples of it. And then there's pages where you can fill in your different thought onions. But sometimes it takes practice and you don't have to be having a situation when you're in the thick of it to practice them. Um, a really good tool to to get better at them is to look at any reaction you've ever had in your life um, and, and start. It take a very long time Well, no, for I'm me. saying like, oh, <laughs> I'm not saying do everyone. I'm saying pick no, one. No, I know. But for me, I would just like never. Where like, do I even begin? I was like, I'm having a reaction right now. <laughs> I'm having a reaction about the I'm reaction. Spontaneously combusting by the thought of it. Um, and you you sit down and you're like, okay, that time where Joe, you know, said, fuck you, and I went into like this like crazy reaction around it. Um, let's thought on you in that. You know, something that you're detached from that you're not so triggered by now. So you can kind of work through it and see the process of it is is helpful. Great. Next question. What's your biggest fear? Ugh, you go first. Sharks. Are you serious? Yeah, Dude, terrified. You, I learned the weirdest shit about you. In terrified of sharks. I have yet to see jaws. Sharks. I have yet to see jaws. I refuse. Are you serious? Yeah. That's your biggest fear. Yeah. Uh, on the planet. On the planet. Hands sharks. down. Yeah. Do you get in the ocean? I I've get seen you severe in the ocean. anxiety. Like, okay. We went to Hawaii and we went on a sailboat and the sailboat stops in the middle of the ocean. And we're like, oh, we're just going to jump into this really clear water. And I was like, great, I'll do it once because I'm not afraid of anything, bitch. And then as soon as I get in the water, I'm like, okay, back on the boat, back on the boat, back on the boat. <laughs> I'm dead. Fucking sharks. Yeah. Wow. Do you watch shark movies? Or no, is that way no. Too shark Week is the bane of my existence. I can't. Oh, I love shark movies. I like can't. Deep Blue Sea, 47 no. meters down. No. There's some good shark no. movies. Bitch, I haven't answered the question yet. Put I the like question to back play away. With the paper. <laughs> sharks. Um, all right. So delete the sharks. Deleted. Um, uh, God, you're like funny and I'm morbid. So I guess at least we balance <laughs> each other out. My biggest fear is the people I love dying. <laughs> For obvious reasons. By sharks. No. <laughs> <laughs> by anything. By any number of situations. And it's such a fucking fear that like I will let my, I mean, I've talked about this before. I'll let my head play out scenarios of like, oh, they haven't answered the phone in two hours. They're obviously dead in a ravine somewhere. Like clearly that's, that's what's happened. There's if no I other answered reason. two hours later, I'm dead in a ravine somewhere. Right. <laughs> but like, you know me. And if I don't answer my phone in two hours, I probably am dead. Like legitimately. <laughs> Unless I have said I'm going off the grid. That's if, true. If there's a two hour period where I do not respond, mm. I'm probably dead. It's true. Okay. Next question. Now can I? Yes. Now. Okay. Now the paper. Now you may. Okay. Would you ever get legally married again? I've gotten this question before. I think we've done this on a questions episode, but there's a lot of new people, so we'll we'll rediscuss. And uh, you know, maybe we're in a well. Place I think in it's a different answer now. Right. Right. Well, no, I don't know about that, but I I would. I'm not. I don't feel a need to, and I'm not in a rush to by any means. I mean, Tay and I own a house together and three dogs. Like we're kind of fucking in it to win it at this point, but um. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's tax benefits and like eventually we'll probably, you know, want to do like <laughs> for a cute the little taxes. thing. Um, for, the, for the people. Um, but it, I definitely do not in any capacity like want a wedding situation again. Like I've been there, done that. Rather put the money into like another Why house. do like a trip. Or an epic vacation, yeah. Like a like, wedding trip. Like tell me when like we're going to Thailand, people. I will show We're going up on for my birthday. Oh, good to know. I just decided like three days ago. 
like your next birthday, like in a few months. Yeah. Are you fucking insane? Why? To go to Thailand? Why? Because that's like not that much time to plan. Um, okay, You're 48 like, okay, hours. Okay. <laughs> like meant, what, where are we? What I'm is this for even like about? other people to get their finances and shit? In, okay, we'll discuss this at a later date. Anyways, <laughs> um, yes, I would legally get married again. I don't feel a need to at this time. Tay and I have both been married. We've both been divorced. So like we're not in a rush. He does ask, ask me once a week, but you know. <laughs> what if once a week he asks you and asks you and asks you and, what and then it? one day you're like, okay, let's right, go right, right now, courthouse. He, he'd get in the car. He's, with the he's, dogs. He's a wild romantic <laughs> like that. The dogs have to come. <laughs> yeah. They're the witnesses. Right, with a bow tie, preferably. Which you already have on hand. Yes. That he's pulled out. Cause he's like, I've been waiting for this very moment. <laughs> Jade's like, hang on, I'll get the bow ties. I'm dead. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Next one. Are there going to be any translations for your books or a movie? Or, um, I hope so because I, I get this question a lot. Um, and I want them to be it because I self published. They're only in English right now. Um, I have to get with a publishing company for foreign rights to translate it and publish it in that sense. Um, that's not something I can do on my own. Um, so I'm in the very, very early stages of figuring that out. It's a world I do not know at all. So I'm I'm kind of like floundering my way through. Um, and uh, fucking movie question, man. I mean, safely we can say no, right? Not a movie. There we go. The end. The end. Delete. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, will there be a book three? Uh, um, okay. I think so. At some point. Um, are we? Is that the last question? Yeah. Oh, how exciting! I and want now you're this turning to into be a, a hat. It's kind of a. The people listening. Oh my god! To oh this, my god! The people <laughs> listening to this episode and not watching it on YouTube are probably like, "What the fuck is happening?" Right That's now? why they should stop listening and hop on over you to know, YouTube. This episode, if any episode, is worth watching on YouTube. Um, I think there will eventually be a book three. Um, I don't. I fucking pray to God that it's not the th the third in a trilogy, um, because that would mean my life would have to explode. So in some what would it be about? Way. Well, I think. I think it's going to not be soon because I need to live some more fucking life. But I think eventually it will be a more all encompassing look on my life and revisiting certain moments that were pivotal to me and lessons I learned um, about those certain moments, but still in my F-bomb flair and style of writing um, to kind of, take people through a different kind of healing journey. Would you ever write a fictional book? I don't think so. And I don't know why I say it like that because I used to write creative fiction all the time in like my creative writing classes in school and stuff and I loved it. But I don't think so. I, I don't know. And I, I think I'm still, I still have writing hangover from The Ridiculous Misadventures because right now the thought of writing is just like, oh my God stab me in between the eyes um but that eventually fades and I'm sure the inspiration will come again um I'm sure there's some screenplays that'll pop out of me at some point as well so you know it's like birthing a child you got to give it some gotta give it some time to heal gotta like you know and by s give it you mean your vagina yeah you gotta like let let your shit come back together take a little breather yeah We've really bounced around in this episode. <laughs> like, you can tell it's the end of the day. We're fucking like, <laughs> I mean, we've really, it's, it's, been, it's been an all-encompassing episode. We had some book questions. We talked about some vaginal births. We deleted some people. I learned that you have a deathly fear of sharks and wanted to be a fucking archaeologist. I mean, it can't Who get any better than that. Knew? I mean, wow. And that we're going to Thailand in March. I mean, God, dude, like what? Okay. Okay. We'll argue about this later. Um, now we are going to take a turn and uh -oh. I'm going to keep you 
on. Wait, you didn't tell me about this part. Yeah, I know. Surprise, uh, bitch. <laughs> I don't want it. No, oh, oh, wait, oh, we're cutting. No, we're, we're cutting. We're going to take a turn and you're going to comment with me on everybody's FML stories. Here's number one. Hey, Gabrielle, it's Maya. I was in an unhealthy marriage and last year in August, we got a divorce. He was mentally, emotionally, sexually, and physically abusive. I didn't believe he was physically abusive until just a couple of weeks ago because I didn't want to believe it. One morning while we were having sex, I started crying, like ugly crying. I didn't know why and I still don't, but my therapist and I have came to the conclusion something happened when I was younger. I remember my ex-husband holding me and being there for me as I cried, but that's not what happened. Recently, I have realized I made up this fake memory so that I would forget what really happened. So we were in the middle of sex, I was crying, and from there he hit me. He said that he would do much worse if I didn't stop crying. I could barely stop crying, but I knew that if I didn't, he would have punched me. I'm so happy that I am out of that situation. I never used to be. I wanted to stay in it, but I have realized it's because I thought I deserved to be treated that way. It hasn't been easy, and Gabrielle, everything you have done has helped me in such a tremendous way. I have two amazing lifelong friends in my life because of you, and I am so grateful for that. Also, if you are listening to this and are in or have been in a situation like this, I promise it will get better. I know it's hard and some days seem impossible, but one day you will learn to love yourself and love the life you are living. Ugh. So this one hits close to home for me because we both met Maya at the launch party for the Ridiculous Misadventures, which is where she met those two lifelong friends that she's referring to. And so I feel, I mean, I do know her now, but like I feel like this is someone I really know that's sharing this story. Um, so this is different for me. And a while ago I posted um, the film that I directed called It Happened Again Last Night, which is about a relationship that's going through domestic violence. And there's a scene in it where the man playing my boyfriend and I are having sex and I'm crying. And she messaged me and was like, this was so weird to see this on screen because I went through this. And it's such an accurate representation of how we like disassociate during situations like this. Um, I, my heart just like breaks hearing this and I know that she's since gone no contact with him and I'm so fucking proud of you girl um, for, for really like putting the nail in the coffin and choosing you and making different choices for yourself. Um, I can't imagine being in a situation like that. That's like heartbreaking to me. Yeah, that's really, it's like you don't even have the words. It's like, yeah. How do you? how do you comment on that? Right. You know, like there's just so many horrible people in the world that have like bad mental problems and that's why they resort to violence and take their trauma out on they others. They take their trauma out on others and they're just bad people. And I just wonder like how far back that goes. Like who's, who's the one that decided that that's like who hurt him? Yeah, like, happen. who's the one that decided that that is going to be something? Because it's not just this instance. Mm -hmm. This is one of probably thousands, right. if not more. Yeah. So it's, like, it's kind of heartbreaking because it's, like, you know that's not the only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, how do you solve the problem? Like, I'm here listening. I'm, like, I'm going to come up with a solution. I'm, like, I don't have one. I don't yeah. know how to fix the problem, you know, like. I think the the solution is everyone being aware of it and speaking out on it um, and supporting it when it does, you know, supporting the victims when it does happen yeah. and, and giving them a, a space to heal and a space to share their story and lift their voice up. Uh, we're sending you so much love, girl. All right, here is story number two. Hey, Gabrielle, my name is Bryn. I'm 21 years old and I'm an actor, writer, and director. Uh, this whole story takes over a span of two months. Uh, I knew this guy uh, 
from first year of school and uh, we didn't have many classes together so we didn't get to really talk as much and now second year he was in my class and I grew the courage to you know tell him he was cute and that I would like to get to know him a little more and hang out more um and he said the same thing so um my friend Chris visits me and we go to a party with a group of my friends and a lot of my classmates were there but as I'm drinking with my friends, I look over and he's making out with another girl. And I was pissed because just that night before, he had told me that he did grow feelings for me. And he's so after they pulled away, he looks directly at me. Um, so the party dies down not too long after that. And I go to leave with my friends and he walks over to me and talks to me as if nothing happened. And then before I left with my friends, I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to go say something to him. So basically to sum it up, I told him that he needs to handle his shit. And if he wants to be with me, that he sh needs to just let me know. Um, then he proceeds to ask me for a hug and I gave him the hug. And then he kept apologizing and saying he didn't know what happened. And I was like, don't bullshit me. You know what happened. Um, and then I left after that. Uh, the next day's Memorial Day. My friend leaves and goes home and he asks to talk to me. I go upstairs and he's drunk again. It was a shit show. Um, his friend starts crying and he was emotional because he misses his family. So I'm comforting him. But then the guy I'm talking to, he's all up on me, kissing me, hugging me, saying how great I am, saying how much he likes me, blah, blah, blah. As a little bit more time goes on, the conversation starts getting really deep. Um, he starts talking about a lot of things that happened to him in his childhood and I felt really bad. Um, and then he looks at me and asks to talk in private. I said, yeah, of course, that's fine. Um, we ask his roommate to leave and then he gets mad and starts yelling at both of us saying he doesn't want to leave him alone in the room. And I was like, well, he'll be with me because he wants to talk to me. So eventually we get him out of the room and then we talk and it was an emotional talk. And then he proceeds to start kissing me. And so I push him away, but not harshly. And I told him, I'm not kissing you while you're drunk. And he was weird with me for most of that week. And then he texted me and we were talking a little bit. And I just told him basically that if he needed to talk about anything, uh, he can come to talk to me at any time. And um, I'd always be there for him. And uh, then I just told him I was worried about him. He asked why I was worried. And I said he just seemed to be drinking too much. And I told him, I was like, if that's your thing, totally cool. Do you? I just can't be around that all the time because uh, something like that happened with a close family member of mine. And I just didn't want those memories to be brought back up. Uh, it made me anxious. It made me sad. And I just didn't want to be around alcohol all the time. And he went and told his friends about this. And they all said that I was being judgmental, controlling, and that he shouldn't talk to me anymore, which pissed me off because anybody who knows me knows that I would never judge and or try to control somebody. So after that conversation, we hung out a few more times. Then it just went downhill again from there. And we just argued a lot. I called him out on his bullshit if he was disrespectful. And now present day, I mean, we're on good terms, uh, but we very, very, very rarely talk. But I'm glad I got out of that situation because there were so many moments where I felt manipulated and used. And I was being told that I'm somebody I'm not. And I was not going to be put through that because I know who I am. And everybody that knows and loves me knows who I am. And I'm glad that we didn't end up dating because who knows, he could have cheated on me like he, that, that whole thing that happened at the club. So I am just happy that I got out of that situation when I did. Um, I just want to say that Gabrielle, I think you're great. I love your work. I love the podcast. I love the books. You're an icon. You're a badass queen. Um, I hope to work with you one day and collaborate with you. And I just hope you and the fans enjoyed this incredibly complicated odd ass story so there was two men involved i think because she said one of them was over there and then she was kissing this one guy and then right. he tapped her on the shoulder so right. there's two and this is college town like this is like 21 year olds right. we're talking about yeah. it sounds like like typical like college, college like debauchery and yes. 20 year old like but mistakes I, I will say Good for you, girl, for recognizing the red flags. And well, but I did. I will say you made one key, very tragic mistake. Is when you said 
the door's always open. You can come anytime. Right. That was his cue to be like, I can manipulate you for the rest of time. Like in their 20s, guys are like pushing the boundaries of like what they can get away with. And the moment a girl says to them, I'm here for you no matter what. They're like, fuck this bitch. I'm going to get some pussy. Like, oh my God, like that's, dude. that's how 20 year olds are. Yeah. Even into their 30s. Yeah. Like that's how men are when they are in a very immature mindset. Right. When they certain haven't, men. that's how certain. Well, yeah, men are. certain men when they yeah. haven't grown, when they haven't progressed, right. when they haven't gone to therapy, when they haven't like become but, an adult, but they're I think like that. I think it's really good that she identified a trigger of hers being alcohol and being like yeah. this person is consistently fucking with that trigger and no mas. Yeah, the rest I think is just gonna keep happening because that's just twenties. Yeah. But we're going back to what we said in the question is like, don't put all your energy in relationships. Yes, <laughs> be in your early twenties and fucking like do your career, do your fun, do your life. Fuck the men and, at and this point, like in your life. Like know those red flags now because the next guy, which there will be like another handful of guys that do the exact same thing to you. You can be like, Kate, bye bye door delete, closed. Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> um, and thank you for those wonderful compliments, girl. You're a fucking icon. <laughs> thank you. Love you for that. Um, and so glad you've been enjoying the show. Next week, everybody, we are bringing on yet another man to FML Talk. Oh my God, this is the season of men. The season, of, it's raining men. Hallelujah. This is why I don't This sing. is why we're not singers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, Rob Harvey is coming on next week. We connected online. He went from being a piece of shit husband to a person who brings women's stories to the forefront and really champions their voices now and has turned his whole life around. And it's a really wonderful story of personal growth to not only see, but also, are you starting the slow, the slow clap over there? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> slow clap for Rob Harvey. Um, but not only of personal growth, but the stories he shares of other women and now using his platform to share their stories and their voices, I think is really wonderful. And I'm excited to have him on to discuss. He sounds like the epitome of like everything we're trying to preach. Yeah. <laughs> to fix the men, <laughs> fix the trauma, fix the healing, men and women, man, fix your shit. Um, so that is coming at you next week. As always, make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Keep up with us on Instagram at FML Talk Podcast for all the giveaways and behind the scenes goodies. We are now officially on YouTube so you can watch all the fucking debauchery live in studio on youtube.com slash FML Talk. And if you are not part of the self-love fucking party on Patreon, that's where all the good shit is happening. There are three seasons of mini bonus episodes, access to the private self-love Facebook group, 10% off all the merch, all the fucking things, you guys. That's patreon.com. And there might be something new on the horizon. Slash FML talk. I don't know. I don't even know when this episode is airing. I can't plug shit at it this point. It could be new. It could be old. We never know. Just, you know, subscribe to all the things. Just do so you it. don't miss shit. Okay. Do we it. love you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.